Hello there, today we talk about the most common questions asked for university admissions abroad, GRE, TOEFL, etc. etc. Uh, I scored 321 in GRE, I scored 120 in TOEFL. Thank you, thank you. I graduated from California State University Long Beach in 2015 and I have been helping people with their university admissions for the last four years. And, uh, people have been asking me all these questions from uh, Facebook and then Twitter and Quora uh, and I think the most proper way to answer all your questions is through a video because I can um, I can speak very fast as you can see that and I can answer most of your questions very fast and you can comment down below and you can see everything whenever you want to because you have the links and you have uh, I mean it's it's more interesting I guess so I also happen to have a blog which has been out there for like last uh, four years and I have written everything I have learned till now about university admissions there I didn't use any consultancy services or I didn't uh, join any tutoring services for my GRE and TOEFL and I think that helped me to learn more so that I can help you Our first question, when to apply? Now, uh, so if you want to join universities in fall 2017 that is the semester of August 2017 then you should have started your application right now and you should have your GRE and TOEFL scores. Most of the very prestigious universities have their deadlines in October and November and some of them uh, do have deadlines till March and April which gives you more time but the, but the more you delay your application the less choices you might have. So uh, be as fast as you can with the applications and you should be good. And it doesn't matter if you apply for uh, fall or spring it doesn't create a huge difference that should matter but there are a few differences that I have also included in my blog that you should read uh, down below in the description. The second, second question I am asked most of the time is which university I should apply for. I cannot answer that question for you because uh, the universities can be like, there can be a lot of universities which might interest you and which are good for you. For example, I scored 321 in GRE but um, I didn't want to spend so much on my education uh, so uh, I tried to uh, reduce the cost uh, as much as possible and that's why I applied for California State University Long Beach as you can see that. There are other factors too because um, the CSULB has a lot of uh, courses that were of my choice and I loved it. So you should do the same. Uh, try to uh, go with all the universities. There are a lot of factors involved. The cost of the university, the location of the university. Uh, if you're a computer science graduate then you should be in uh, areas which are like San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, uh, Chicago, Texas. If you're like a film major then you should be in New York or Los Angeles. If you uh, are mechanical engineer then you should be in Texas. Same for the automobile engineers. So it totally depends on which kind of uh, field you are in and which location uh, helps you the most. And if not that then also comes the second factor which is the cost of the university and also, also the return of the investment. All it matters is uh, that uh, you go and enjoy yourself. Uh, what am I saying? Uh, so there are a lot of factors and no one can decide that for you so uh, even the consultancies that give you a list of the university that you should apply for they just give you based on your GRE score which is totally wrong and also maybe your budget but still I mean it uh, no one can decide for a university other than you it totally depends on your interest uh, I also have written uh, something about those how to select universities and all the factors that are involved and that might help you the link is again in the description below one thing you should take care of is that the university you are applying to is legal and is not something like very new and they are not doing any shady things because you have to stay clear of the universities which might be uh, blacklisted later and which are also blacklisted right now. So make sure you apply for a very good university or uh, you check the history as well as what they are doing right now and if their status is legal. I tried to stay away from private universities which I don't know of as much and I applied for the state universities or the private universities which are very prestigious. Okay, the next question I'm asked the most is funding. So, uh, funding is very tough for international students. Funding uh, is in the form of scholarships or research assistantships. There are some universities which are, uh, which are very good for funding. For example, some private universities, University of Southern California, uh, there's Carnegie Mellon University, Stanford, of course, Harvard, of course. And uh, but there are a lot of universities where international students don't don't have the um, don't have the reach to a funding resources. So I would I would suggest not to depend on the funding or research assistantship or any kind of scholarship. Uh, make sure you budget yourself properly, right? And uh, as I said, there are some universities which kind of do some shady stuff. They might entice you by giving you scholarships or fundings, but uh, that is just like a discount on your education, which. They might have bumped up the price and they just want to have you as a student so that you can pay to them and they earn from it. 
So try to stay clear uh, from that and uh, just don't depend on fun. Profile evaluation. I get a lot of questions about people that uh, this is their friend's profile, but I know that it's actually their profile. But I don't know. I don't care about that. I just answer all the questions. And uh, the only problem is I can't. Uh, I can't just go through a profile and just say the easiest university are the one you need to go for. You need to give me a list, and then I can evaluate the profile. And also, I get thousands of requests through the profile evaluation, so I can't do it for everyone. Uh, so what I would suggest is go for it yourself. I will try to help as many people as I can, but still, it's 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 tough for me to do thousands of things with my job and my other hobbies. Yeah, stay with me and um, just don't get disappointed if I don't reply or I don't answer because I have to go through every of them. It's, it's better if you do it for yourself. I have done it for myself and it worked out great for me and you should do it yourself too. Trust yourself and do your research and go with the universities that you like. The other most common questions I'm asked is the GI score. So people ask me what, what GI score should I have to apply for these, these universities and what do you think is the best GI score I should get or something. Just just go for the best score you can apply. You, you can't control the things that, okay, I need this much GI score and that's why I should prepare this much and then go when I think I'm ready for this much score. Just go for the 100% score. If I say, okay, score this much uh, score, like let's say 310 or something, it's not like you're going to do the 310 and then stop there answering the questions, right? You're going to try for the best. So just go and try for the best. Don't worry about uh, how much score you should have or how much you shouldn't have. The other related question is the same thing is, should I retake GRE? So my answer is, it depends. If you score somewhere around 300 to 300 and um, 40 then it's it's fine it's a great score and you don't need to worry about uh, much if you think you can you you had some trouble while giving the test and you can at least have like 20 points or 10 points more when you retake the GRE it might be worth giving it again but I always try to stay care of it of course if you have some score which is uh, below 290 or something I totally suggest that you retake it if you have time but again as I said no matter what your GI score is, you can get some or the other university. The other question I'm asked most is, is the research required? Research is not required if you're applying for masters in your field. If you're applying for a PhD, that's a different story. But if you're applying for masters or if you're applying for a bachelor's degree, then you should just uh, go there. There are a lot of options other than research. You can uh, do a project or you can do a thesis. And if, if you're planning to go to PhD, then of course in your master's or bachelor's uh, degree, you can start doing your research work and you can use that later in your PhD applications. But research is not at all required and don't worry about it and don't fright about it. It's not a big deal, though it creates a difference if you're going to a university with that kind of um, concentration in mind. Consultant services. I hate consultant services. I never joined them. I. Uh, I talk to people that you shouldn't join them either because they just see your score and they just give you a list of universities that work for most of the students with the same score or with the same budget and that's not the right way to apply to the university. There are a lot of th lot of things to consider and they can't do it for all the students that they have, it's like hundreds of them. So I stay clear of the consultancy but if you can't do it all yourself then of course it's, uh, it's an option. It doesn't matter if you go to job or if you just come here directly for your masters because if you go for your job, you have more experience and that helps you in getting uh, the best universities you can based on your experience. And if you don't have experience and you just come right now after your graduation, that also works for you because you have more time. Uh, that's all the questions. Uh, I think that might have helped you a lot. If these didn't help you, feel free to comment uh, on the video below and uh, I will try to answer all your questions in the next coming videos. I'm trying to upload the videos like every uh, other week or twice a week. But if you have like a lot of questions, feel free to comment below and I will, I can increase the frequency as much as per day so that I can answer all your questions. Subscribe below and once you have subscribed, there's a bell button uh, beside the subscribe button. Just click on that so that once uh, I upload any video with, your, with the answers to your questions, you get notified of uh, the new video. Feel free to join me on all the social groups, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc, etc. So feel free to join me and ask me questions. Uh, don't take it personally if I don't answer your questions because I, as I said, I have like a lot of questions coming to me, but I will try my best to answer your questions if it has, if it's like very unique to a situation and it's only me who can answer the questions. Or I mean, if, if I haven't answered the questions in my other videos or blogs and it's something that I should answer you and it's urgent and it's very important for your applications. Yeah, I get to decide that. I, uh, I wish you the best and uh, let's see you later.